It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. And today, to start off this class, I'm going to uh, give you a lecture based on my own personal experience and my own personal feelings. I have spent some uh, quiet time recently thinking about a previous relationship. As you know, I live alone, and I've been living alone for some time now. But um, I have a previous relationship, a specific one in my mind. It's a litigious society, so I'm not going to say who it was or when it was. Let's just say it's from the past. And in this lecture today, boys, I want to talk about money. Women want your money. I always say there are exceptions to every rule. That should be obvious, but nonetheless, there are a few morons out there who say, Why do you say all women want money? All women don't want money. I don't want money. I never said all women want money. Well, you said all women want money. I don't want money, and none of my friends want money either. It's the same call I get all the time. Shut up. Shut up. Sure, there are exceptions, and if you are an exception, you probably have friends who are like you. Let me save us the phone call right now, girls. Generally speaking, women want your money, men. And you can't see it because you want pool. They know you want poon, and so they get themselves into position to get your money. Because you are temporarily insane while you're trying to get a woman's panties off, many of you will start spending money. Now, some of you, uh, maybe, like your profession, don't spend a lot in the beginning, but maybe once you're in a relationship, you're not as careful. And perhaps you... Uh, you buy your living girlfriend or your wife a car, or you buy a big house for her to live in with you. Perhaps you um, take her on an expensive vacation. And um, many women equate love with your ability to support them. In other words, women love to feel secure. One thing that makes women feel secure is your money. So you'd be amazed how much women love you if you have money. And by the way, a lot. what is a lot of money? Well, to each person, it's a different amount of money. If a woman makes $22,000 a year and she meets a man who makes $32,000 a year, she thinks she's hit the jackpot. So you don't have to have a lot of money to be in this position. But uh, what it gets right down to is that women think their company is worth more than ours. They think their sexual availability has monetary value that ours doesn't. Or at least they try to con us into believing that's the case. And they believe that once they have the keys to our place, once they are officially the girlfriend or the wife or whatever, the live-in, that it is your job to shovel money in their direction. And in many cases, their love is directly correlated to how well you are able to support the enterprise. Whether it be a relationship, whether it be a live-in relationship, whether it be a marriage, whether it be a marriage with kids, whether it be a live-in relationship with kids. It's amazing how much a woman's love has to do with how well you support the family. It's amazing how many women stop loving you if you are unable to work or depressed or in some cases unwilling to work for a period of time amazing how many of these women who quote unquote love you suddenly stop loving you now boys um, I've been married and divorced four times and I've had other relationships as well so I'm going to tell you that uh, when you fall in love you can't see this 
Let me tell you what the other end is like when you get out. When you get out, women want money to leave. They not only want money to move in. They not only want money to have sex with you. They not only want money to spend time with you. They not only want money so they can look at you with puppy dog eyes and pretend to be interested in what you have to say. When you want them to go, they want money for that, too. So when you uh, tell a woman to leave, she wants money. She wants you to help her move. She wants you to pay for her furniture. She wants you to pay for her furnishings. She wants you to pay for her uh, security deposit, first and last month's rent. She'd like you to pay her rent for a year or two if you can get her to do it. She'd like a lump sum, too. And if she can't get you to voluntarily give it and she got you to marry her, she will ultimately get an attorney and find a way to get the money out of you. And even if she doesn't hire an attorney to get the money out of you, suddenly you'll find out how much she doesn't love you once she tells you how much money you owe her. Because what it comes down to is how much money you can provide to the enterprise. I mean, imagine. Are, uh, sure, are there women out there, are there needles in haystack out there who, when a relationship is over, they say, I don't want anything, I'm just getting out of here. Yes, there are exceptions to the rule like that. But generally speaking, women want money to have sex with you. They want money to become your girlfriend. They want money to move in with you. When they move in with you, they want you to pay the rent, you to pay for the groceries, you to pay for the clothing. They want you to buy them a car. They want you to put them through school or pay their debts off. They want you to pay for the wedding. They want you to pay for their uh, kids, provide them sperm, provide them cashola. And then when you want them to leave, they want you to pay them to leave. That's the way this works. And the reason I have been uh, having this on my mind is because I was thinking back on a previous relationship with someone who was funny and lit up my life just to see her come into the room. She was fun, she was funny, she was energetic, she was wonderful. And it wasn't until she left and told me how much money she thought she ought to get that I realized there was no love going on there at all. It was just somebody who wanted money. And her love was uh, directly proportional to how much money I would provide. Amazingly, after she was gone, the number of phone calls deteriorated, the number of uh, encounters in person deteriorated. And most of the phone calls centered around money. How much she had, how much she needed, how much I ought to send over there. It was all about the money. And you know, when you spend time with somebody and you think you love them and they think, or they let you think that they love you, you find out how much they don't love you later on when it's over, and then they tell you how much money you owe them for the experience. I was once with somebody who I told, hey, you know what, I don't think this relationship's working out, we've got different values, it isn't happening. I'd like out. And uh, all of a sudden, it turned from love to, here's how much money I want. Now, I'm not going to say I sent the money, or that I gave the money, or that I... Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying. I don't assume that I just mailed a couple of hundred thousand dollars over there. I didn't. But um, it can be quite an empty feeling when you find out how somebody just wanted money. Oh, yes, they loved you while they were there. and Oh, yes, they, they acted like they loved you. Oh, yes, they took lots of photographs of the two of you together and everything and looked like you had all this fun. But the reality is, underlying it all, they want money. When you meet a woman, you must remember that no matter how friendly she seems, no matter how funny she is, no matter how good she makes you feel, physically, emotionally, mentally, whatever, somewhere in there she thinks that she's being hired for an occupation. This is an employment position. And in exchange for providing you with her time and her good cheer, 
She wants money. You owe her money for that. That is the attitude of many women. And that's why sometimes when I look back on relationships of the past, and I try to think about the good times I had with particular people, it's difficult. Because after the relationship was over, you find out just how much of it was about money. How much they want, how much you should give them, how much they're entitled to, how much their time is worth. Women have talked about, I gave you the best years of my life. Yeah. Like they got nothing out of it during the time you were together. Like essentially you were renting their time and that had value and therefore they want your money. Every once in a while I think back on women I've been with, women I've dated, women I've uh, lived with, women I have married. I think back and I try to think back on all the good times we had. Sometimes I look through old photographs and see some of the things we were doing and saying, God, that looks like that was fun. Oh, I remember this. I remember that. And then every once in a while you're jolted into reality because like, you look at the person's face in the photograph and you're saying, but wait a minute, when it was all over, she balled it down to dollars and cents. She pretty much had an amount in mind and she started telling you what the amount was. So all that time you thought you were having fun, it was like hiring, not quite a hooker because it's more than just sex, but it's like hiring an escort for a long period of time. And in the long run, women feel they should be compensated for the time they spend with you. As you go out with women, date them, have sex with them, never lose sight of that, boys. Never forget that no matter how nice she looks, no matter how friendly her eyes look, you look in her eyes, they sparkle, and you see her, and it makes your day. I know that feeling. When it gets right down to it, it's like hail in a cab. At the end, they throw the flag up and they tell you how much you owe them. And they'd like a tip with that, please. Boys, never forget that. I am your professor. I am here in our classroom, uh, here to tell you about how to avoid commitment, how to avoid serious relationships. Your professor lives alone and is a staunch advocate of living alone. That doesn't mean I'm gay, it doesn't mean I'm bi, it doesn't mean I, I'm asexual or a eunuch. No, no, I think you should have all the fun you can possibly have. But there's no reason to give a woman the key to your place or be paying her bills. None. You have your own place, you have your own peace of mind, you have your own space, and uh, when you want to hide out or be on the DL for a while, you can. That is what you need and want in life. And don't let one of these women convince you that you need more than that. Because you don't. Have sex and go home. Don't let them move into your place, please. I'm telling you from personal experience. Boys, if you'd like to learn how to avoid commitment, avoid serious relationships, avoid marriage, come to the right place. 1-800-5800-DOM. I'm practicing your 101 every day I'm alive. And as little as I got left, I'm paying as little as I can and I'm getting as much as I want. <laughs> it's Like is 101 on the Tom Like is Show. The Tom Likas Show, Likas 101. I am your professor. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Marie, hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Marie. I can't believe I have you on the phone. Wow. Neither can I. <laughs> you you sound, I'm like, you just sound so awful. You sound so jaded, and I I just can't believe this has happened to you. I mean, It's happened to a lot of guys, dear. I just, how, can, do you mind if I ask you how old you are? I'm 49. Wow, I just can't believe, I, I I mean, were you always in show business? How old were you when you first got married? I've been in radio since I was 14. Wow. Like, I just, I don't think all women, I don't know, I mean, I don't really, I'm not out there, so I don't, I don't 
know that all women are like that, and I'm shocked to No one said, again, dear, please don't misquote me. I said that at the beginning of the hour. I never said all women are like that. Oh, you, you're right, you're right. You didn't say that. You said a lot of them. And maybe yes. in California, it's, were you always No, no, California? dear, no. I'm from New York originally. I lived in Miami. I lived in Phoenix. I lived in Boston. All right, well, New York, Miami, those are like, <laughs> those are like the big cities where people are just dying to get ahead, aren't they? I mean, maybe you're hanging out with women. That, that's all there's. Uh, dear, I, I want to be with a woman who is hot, who is attractive. I'm sure I can find some 180 pounder out there who would be very jolly and would like to make dinner for me and just make a quiet home for me. But if I'm going to have someone living with me, I need to have be with somebody who is uh, going to be able to arouse me when, uh, when, when I'm naked. Well, maybe, I don't know, I mean, maybe a hot a woman that is over, I don't know, like, why people are overweight, maybe their self-esteem is bad, or maybe you hang out with them, and then you get their self-esteem, and they lose weight, and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, not in, I'm not in the makeover business, dear. Yeah, yeah, that's true. How, how old were you when you first got married? Eighteen. Which, now, was she, were you, like, the big star, and she was looking up to you? Not when I was eighteen, I wasn't, no. Because... I mean, and I know there's there's other women out there. There's smart women that are that make money, and they're not look. I would think that they're not looking for that. You know, they're not looking for. Well, the the, the thing is, now I'm at a point in my life when I live alone, and I love dating women who have their own apartment, their own money, their own job, their own career, and I'll see them when I feel like it. But I don't want them living in my house. Okay, but you know what's funny? Like you were like telling boys, you're like, boys, don't do this, boys, and that's right. Kind of that's kind of bad because, like, boys need to be able to fall in love because there are... No, they don't. No, they don't. That's when they do stupid things. That's when they have babies with people who just want their money. That's when they get married to people who just want their money. But not everyone's like that. Other I, I never use the word everyone. Well, while well, you're saying boys listen to... It's kind yes, of like, yes. Yes. Like, uh, I mean, there's a lot of men that are really happy with their wives. There's well, a lot of, there's some good women. Guess out what? There. One out of two, one out of every two marriages in this country ends in divorce. One out of two. Yeah. But That's a lot. Right, and also it's half men, half women. Some of them, some women get really dumped on by guys too, and they, you know. I, really but again, my happen. my students are primarily men. I, I did. That's another classroom. I don't teach oh, that class. Oh, so you? I don't really care what happens to women. You're at, you know, I'm sorry, you don't care what happens to what? This is a man's class. It's a class about men, by a man, for men. Women are welcome to audit the course. Is, but it is from a male perspective. It is not for a female. But I don't know. It's just, you I don't know. really care what happens to women. Let somebody else do that show. Yeah, you, I don't know. I feel bad for you. You got it because you got it. Well, I but you don't understand. I am now happier than I've ever been, and I am happier than I've ever been because I don't have unrealistic expectations. I live alone. I'm right all the time. I'm never wrong. I'm never criticized. I'm never nagged. I'm never told what to do or how to do it. I mean, I, I'm the happiest I've ever been. Well, maybe you should thank those women that you went through all that crap. Cause no, now you're, now you know no, 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 no. I'm not thanking know. those women for that. No, I'm not. All I will say is there are certain women who really were the inspiration for this class, and they know who they are, and some of them still listen. Is this like second wife, third wife? Uh, again, I told you I'm not going to be specific because I don't want to be sued, dear. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you. These uh, are some of these women actually do still listen to the show. Yeah. And they know who they are. And I'm sure these are women who have to hear people say, He's your ex? You, you were with him? What a jerk. And they don't realize that the reason I'm such a jerk is because these women had a chance to be with me. And they made me who I am today. <laughs> Dear, you have to talk into the phone. Huh? Oh, is this better? What were you doing over there? I was running. You, dear, you have to talk huh? into the phone. This Can is a national. This is a national broadcast. Okay. You're kidding! Wow. So you have to talk into the phone. So I'll say hi to my two ex-husbands. No, don't do that. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Gilbert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's going on, Dad? I'm doing okay, son. All right. Well, I just want to break you down. Break it down for you. Uh, been listening about eight months. 
and I'm uh, going through a trouble stage with my girlfriend at the time. And this Saturday, I had a boys' night out, little poker. Yeah. Ca- called me nagging, and I got tired and dumped that bitch. All right, it's about time, Gilbert. What are you doing with a girlfriend at 21 years old, huh? Uh, you know, the high school thing, you know. <laughs> stupid, stupid. Don't do it again. Oh, no. And like you say, there's no going back. I, what, you wouldn't need to go back. Right, yeah, exactly. That's, um, you know, there's no looking back, and I'm moving forward and with my boys right now. That's right. Be with your boys, and when you have chicks, uh, you know, uh, pump them and dump them. That's what we say. <laughs> cool, cool. Hit hey, em, hit em and quit them, Gilbert. All right. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Can you take me out with a bong rip? Thank you, Jesus. Here you go, Gilbert. Thank you, Jesus. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Tell these people they're freaks, but you know what? That's one of the reasons I listen, because they're absolutely hysterical. They want to hear all the freaks. Exactly. And nobody has more freaks listening than Tom Likas. The Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas 101, I am your professor, Vic, on the Tom Likas Show. How you doing, Dad? I'm all right, son. First time caller. And, uh, you know, you're talking about spending money on women. Right. Well, I'm a young professional, you know, making good money single, you know. Um, and my question is, what about spending money, you know, on strippers when you go biggest, out with a bunch of biggest friends? Biggest waste of money there is. Hmm. It, uh, strippers are for guys with no game. Well, you know, you go out with the guys. Have I don't mind. Uh, by the way, man. you know, sometimes the guys want to go to a strip club. I've been to strip clubs, but I don't get lap dances. Right. I don't pay them for table dances. I don't tip them. Right. I mean, when I'm in Dallas, for example, there's plenty of uh, strip clubs. And, and these are, you know, upscale, right. top of the line, really great. Great places to to eat and socialize, close business deals, all good. I just do not hand out cash to strippers. I don't do it. Right. You're going to hand out cash. Give it to a hooker. A hooker gives you something for your money. <laughs> that's that's true. What is the point of giving money to a stripper? Can't you get a woman, a hot chick, to take her clothes off? No, I, I understand. You go home with blue balls. Yeah, what's the point? Might as well just pay a friend to uh, kick you in the balls. Well, Get I mean, money. Vic, it means you have no game. Uh, can you not get an attractive woman to take her clothes off at your place? Oh no, I, you know I do. But that if you can, if just... you can, then why pay a stripper? Yeah, I, I hear you. It's just you know sometimes your friends you know say, hey, let's go. Let's let go to strip let club. them pay. Let them pay for me to get in. What? No, no. I'm talking about once you get in. You know, uh, paying at the door is not the end of the request for money. Oh, no, absolutely Once not. you get in there, you're constantly being solicited to hand over more cash. Oh, absolutely. And and you probably do it. You know, you fall into the temptation once in a while. What, what, you're not, what are you tempted by? You're not getting anything. That's true. They take their clothes off on the runway, right? That's yeah, absolutely They've right. They've already stripped for you. That's true. So why do you need to give them any more money? Um, I guess if you haven't felt any uh, fake boobs before, that would be, and they have, you know, not the nice silicone going, so. How about you meet some chicks? <laughs> since yeah, you say yeah, you, I, since you say you have game. Yeah. I have a strip pole in my master bathroom. <laughs> nice. I don't need to go to a strip club. Yeah. And I don't pay women to take their clothes off. It's in your master bathroom? Yes, it is. 
So That's I can cool. I can sit in my jacuzzi. I look out. I should put a picture of this on the website so people can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. I can sit in my jacuzzi with the jets going, <laughs> and I can have a chick who's at my place performing for me while I'm in the tub. Nice. Why do I need to go to a strip club? Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, not every one of us has a you know a pole in our master bathroom. You but... could you could go out and get one. Yeah, they actually have one at my uh, old fraternity house, and all the drunk sorority chicks love to dance around and take pictures. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. By the way, a lot of these chicks at the strip club are sorority chicks working to earn a few more bucks. That's true. It's always for college. When they're off the clock, they do all kinds of things for free that they charge you for when they're at the strip club. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. All right. Well, no more strip clubs for me then. No, I, Either well, that, I'll make my friends pay for if it. If the like, guys yeah. want you to go to a strip club, I got nothing. I, I got no problem with the guys dragging you along to a strip club. What okay. I have a problem with is when they start nickel and diming you to get you to buy lap dances and other things. Right. I. I that's where I check out. Yeah. Well, I hear you. All right, Vic. Good luck. Thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Angel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm okay, Angel. Uh, w what you're saying is so true, man. It's totally true. I have two boy two wonderful boys. I was uh, basically engaged. That chick cheated on me. After she cheated on me, she left and asked me for money. She was like, I need money for this. I need, well, I was like, what the heck are you calling me for? I gave money for my kids, but she wants money for herself. Luckily, that we were not living together. We were going off and on. So we were not actually married, thank God. And uh, it was just a pain. Now I live by myself. It's been two and a half years. I go out whenever I want. I um, I'm actually got a new job about eight months ago. Been promoted already once. And it's not even been a year, and I'm looking for another promotion, hopefully by next year. Uh, and if she was in my life, I would not, I would not have all this. Because women are dream killers. Definitely. I mean, everybody listen to him. Trust me. I, I'm living proof on that. And uh, it's, I mean, every time I used to work late, why are you working late? Well, because I have to. There's a particular kind I got to take care of. No, I need you to come back. I was like, what's wrong with you? And every time I work really late, leave early, she nag and nag and nag and nag. And I was like, oh, you got to be killing me. And at the same time, every time I get paid, it's like, man, that's a pretty big paycheck. Yep, because all this always up. But guess what? This is just for me and my kids. And she used to get upset. I make sure I pay my bills, my side of the bills, and I buy my own clothes, take care of my own kids. But at the same time, she was just like, give me money, give me money, give me money. I'm more like, you're killing me here. So, I mean, it's, it's bad. These women, are, I'm not kidding. I'm not saying all of them are like that, but most of them, they want to see, okay, what kind of car you drive? Huh, you dress nice. What kind of shirt is that? I'm not kidding. They always hunt you down, especially if you go to clubs. You go to clubs, so you got to be really careful out there. Guys, be really careful. I mean, make sure you wear the jimmies. You make sure, I mean, you use all the protection you can because if that thing rips and she gets pregnant, Man, it is all over. No doubt about it. Chad on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Father. How you doing, son? Good. Hey, listen, I have to tell you that you are 100% right about do not ever let a woman move in with you. Ever. I, I, don't, I don't see what benefit there is to it. If you need a cook, hire a cook. If you need a housekeeper... <laughs> Hire a housekeeper. I have a housekeeper who comes over three times a week. Exactly. Cleans my whole house. And, and I'll tell you, no matter what it costs, it's cheaper than having a girlfriend. You're right. And don't ever let a girlfriend know how much money you have, have a key to your house, and don't ever trust them as far as pregnancy. Because... You will always get the shorter than the stick. And the reason why I'm calling in is because I don't think everyone takes this, not everyone takes this to heart. I but I right. had a situation about two years ago where a girl 
tried to con me here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And there's a law here where she was trying to move into my house and if, knowing that she couldn't uh, be forced to move out once she got in. Exactly. But there's also, I don't know if it's in California or not. I used to live in California. I lived over in Asia as well. But I have a home here in Arizona. There's a seven-day standing law here. And you, once you're in, you can't get out. That's what I'm saying. Yes, exactly. But, however, the other way she tried to do it is get a domestic violence charge against me in my own home so she could get me... Uh, evicted out of my own home, and I would still be responsible for for the payment of the of the mortgage. This and is why I tell guys don't even have sex with her at your house. Exactly. Don't let them know where you live. Just like you say, say, hey, this is my new house over here. Go over to a buddy's house if you're really connected, but go to their house. Do something else. But another thing, real quick, that, that I, that I think is really funny that you said a couple of weeks ago, you're 100, and I know you're coming here on the 28th to Tempe to McDuffie's. Yeah. You're 100% off on, on what you said about the older women in Scottsdale. You're leading these guys wrong. They don't have to spend a penny. All they have to do I is... I never tell them to spend money. I'm oh, sorry? I never told the guys to spend money on that. No, 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 not not to spend money, but they that they, they have to go out and 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 the, the the women here. There's so many older women that have basically gotten divorced or or you know that the husbands have left. Them. Yeah, when I lived in Arizona, we called these women the flying leathernecks, you know, because exactly. they've been in the Arizona sun so long. Yeah, they they start looking like an alligator purse. But most of the forty or fifty year olds look like twenty five year olds. One one other thing, just real quick. The, uh, the the one thing you always say about about uh, you know not trusting women with birth control, not tr trusting you know as far as condoms, make sure you're very safe. One thing that people might want to consider: I'm 33, I don't want to have children. I went in, I'm going to get in and get a vasectomy because I know I don't want children. And also, I don't want to have the responsibility or have to make the payment because I make good money. I, I, that's something that I, that I choose to do. But people that are out there, you know, going out and making decisions, they need, need to be smarter about it because don't trust women as far as if they tell you they're on the pill, unless you see, it, see them put in their mouth every single day for, for the 28-day uh, cycle, don't believe it. Chances them. are they're not. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I'm really excited to talk to you. You've turned me on so much. Is that so? Yes. The Tom Likas Show. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Chris. Chris right here in Orange County, and I'm I'm gonna tell you, um, you're the dad I never had. I'm gonna appreciate it. I mean, I've gone with the advert with the Top Gun DI defense attorney. I just went with them, got a DUI. But let me tell you the story on this bitch. Um, well, first thing, how are you doing, Tom? Do you care, Chris? Yes, I do. Doing let great. Great. Let me tell you this. I mean, you're so right. This bitch has spent uh, well, it's one year and a half. Um, today was like a year and seven months. But you know what? You're so right. This chick, I spent so much money on her. I mean, I have my own computer business. Um, I spent so much money. I would buy her clothing. I would buy her CDs. I would buy her, take her out to dinner, do anything for her, right? Now, it look, um, I got a DUI. Now, I got, I'm in some, some trouble right now. You know, trying to get out of it, but the bitch just goes and tells me yesterday, you know what, um, you're, you're, you're not the one I'm looking for, bye. And then I still... Well, so was it worth it to spend all that cash, Chris? Clothing, some bitch, some bitch, that's not even worth it. It's never, ever worth it to spend money on a bitch. The Tom Likas Show.